Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. As usual, I'm still Captain Foley. And I have not changed. There's been no new developments, there's been no new fixes to the formula. We are as superbly shiny as normal. And either because of something, or are we just that good? I don't know, do we give the secret away, Stuart? That, that we get repaired on an episode-by-episode -episode basis by a special tool. Maybe we'll have to tell the truth, finally. A very important... Uh, fundamental field replicator with neurocatomic interface. That thing from Sergeant Picard. We're talking about it because the way I've sort of said it in our notes is the magic Star Trek repair tool. That's the vibe I got, and it is tech, sort of. Um, how do you feel about it? I mean, it's an alien technology, so it's fine. We've seen a lot of stuff like that previously on Star Trek. Just weird, like even Scotty's like, well, this is impressive or whatever. Um, so... Not really an issue with it. Um, I wish we would have seen, as we saw like in the behind the scenes on the ready room, there was like a kit that had that one and then like two or three other ones, one that went on the fingers and stuff. So it would have been cool to see those as well. But I kind of like the idea of the, the tech. I think it's interesting. You basically, this needs to be fixed. This is what it was like before. And it just uses your brain waves to, to fix whatever the thing is. I think it's kind of neat. Uh, I wish it would have been used on Picard as opposed to the other solution that they came up with. And that's really where I thought they were going to go with it. <laughs> well, I mean, talking about reviving him, magic tool that can also revive the dying is a little even more God power than revive a ship. Not necessarily bring him back to life, but I mean, there should be a surgical version of it that can like go in and repair the, his aromatic syndrome or whatever was on, wrong with his parietal lobe, right? That's what I thought they were going to do, not the death thing. Well, it depends. I mean, there's synth organics that design for synth organic tech. Um, so even if there was another version, it wouldn't necessarily be work with biological because they don't have, you know, red blood cells and all the same organic structure. So you wouldn't want to, you know, operate on them the exact same way. But they do, though. That's the point. They're basic, basically indistinguishable from humans. We've They've established that with Soji and Dodge. So I don't know. This the device is first introduced to Rafi, uh, and it's quite a cute little scene. She's like, "Oh, what's this?" and and the uh, the lady's like, "It fixes things." And they're like, "How? Imagination." And she's like, "Okay, then you crazy person." And that that felt a bit odd. Um, luckily, Jardy later on, after we see it in action, gives it the the quantifier which you, you explained, and it sounds basically like a replicator that use that that is a you know, connected to one's brain waves, and therefore it just sort of does. Um, which makes sense to some degree. If you connect yourself to a, a a replicator or the computer of a ship, you could tell it like a holodeck to suddenly build whatever you want. There is some making sense there, but it it went from be you know it was certainly pitched this weirdly sci-fi futuristic tech that's it's difficult organic feel. I was gonna say it's it's similar to Borg tech in a way. You got the Borg nanoprobes that essentially have the same ish the same thing. They have rep many little replicators. And they kind of do whatever the host tells them to do, so it's kind of kind of linked that way. I, I thought the design was kind of unique, though. Um, like I said before, it looks very much like Link's flute in the um, Ocarina of Time. <laughs> A lot of people have made that comparison. Mm. So also kind of like Malon tech from Earthfile Conflict, just less see-through. And it is tricky because I like, even though there's the techno babble term. Uh, when in Voyager they say, you know, the quantum reality is using phase particles, or just, you know, the least is something, and you understand that it's all grounded. The way they uh, sort of showed this device at the start is very much just as if, look, here is magic, and, and just like some other stuff, like in the spore drive and such, there's, there's certain levels where they push that slightly beyond. I, I think there's, there's a tendency with alien tech in the newer treks just sort of say, well, it does because it does. Whereas in the old days, they tried a little bit harder, and it doesn't take much. When Andrade actually says it was a replicator, that's much more interesting. But then it makes me wonder, so these, these organic synths have only had 14 maximum years of life, and their society is a few people on one building, maybe two, maybe three. Like, we, we never, it's not, never shown to be a full colony. It's this little, you know, utopian little society. How have they even developed these, these devices? I mean, Sung and Maddox are good at mechanical people why would those people then be able to design magic organic tech which you know what i mean there's a bit of a leap there it looks like an alien hyper advanced thing but it was built by just datas in a few years very easily we don't know that we don't know what was on that planet before soon and maddox decided to put up roots there maybe they found 
hints of an ancient civilization that's part of it and that's one of the reasons they established things there because they could actually make that next step to synth organic because as we learned in the first episode that was still like about a thousand years away like with our technology yeah without data's positronics there's a whole novel there if somebody wants to go into it that there's this underground civilization that that died millennia ago or something and they were super advanced and it was discovered because I, I got the feeling that it didn't it didn't look designed by the androids they just knew how to use it um which we never saw them do either so it was, the, it, was, it was weirdly abstract and it was i mean it felt really it was just a plot device it was a we need to we need to destroy the lesser arena's ability to fight and we need to fix the lesser arena without anything in between. So let's just give them a device that can do it. And we saw the behind the scenes ready room. There's lots of pictures and implied lots of things, but it's not given any time to, to breathe. And and yeah, I love the idea of this ancient alien race. That's great. There's no evidence of it in on the show. It's clearly their tech, except it doesn't look, feel or act like you'd assume. And like I say, I don't see if, if they are designed by synths, why would they be able to build them? Now, I guess you could say, well, Data had the ability to use all of the brain, you know, all of the information of the Federation. So if you pump their brains full of information, they could just engineer something together. I never got the sense that was something he could necessarily do. Just just suddenly invent things and build things and be clever like that. It wasn't necessarily... I, I guess you could design a synth organic, one of the generations, to be creative in this and then give them the six years and just create every day, all day, you know, 24 hours a day. Yeah, I'm still... An- you know, subscribe to the idea that it was actually discovered on the planet, perhaps, or found or found elsewhere. Um, it would have been better, actually, as a um, visual tie-in to have the building look similar to the device. Like, this was something that was discovered, not necessarily built by Soong and Maddox, because it's very much like a human building, right? Or, how great would it have been if it was the same planet the law went to in Descent, to the same exact building? Yeah, because well, it looks like it almost. Yeah, there's a certain vibe of that. If Sung had this other son, he would know about Law. I'm sure you know you could easily retcon that Law talked to him, and you know maybe he helped him whatever the whatever, and therefore he knew that was a base. And then imagine going there with all this, you know leftover Borg tech and 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 Law tech, and it's like that'd be a great place. Plus, it was obviously a pick there for a reason. They could say, well, yes, there's this other advanced race there. La la la. That'd be kind of nice. And then, does this one device felt a bit too much like magic to me? Especially as Rio says. It's an impossible problem to fix, the fusion. Not that you can replace it easily, just that the piece itself. And the tendrils just kind of energize it. You know, it, I would have preferred if as they tendrilled out, it like disintegrated the part and then built a new part. Rather than fixing it with magic, science, it'd like replicate a new piece in. But I mean, it, go- it goes back to the saying, like you keep mentioning it as magic, magic tool, or whatever. Um, but it goes back to the Arthur C. Clarke, you know, quote, any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, um, which I think is great because it's just more advanced tech. Um, but it, it's it, with the way she explains it, you know, a fundamental field replicator, simple, with a neurocatamic interface. I don't know quite what catamic means, but anyway, it links into your thoughts. <laughs> and uh, so it was kind of explained, so I, I don't have an issue with it. I think it's great. I just wish there it would be this, you know, explain that it was found on a planet from an ancient civilization. Or something. It, it was a thing. I just wanted to talk about it briefly because it was cool, but, you know, I think not done great. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. What do you guys think of this tool? Do you like our ideas? Uh, let If you have any other ideas, thoughts about it, let us know in the comments down below. And as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out other videos by us. Share it around. Click the notification icon. All those great things. Do your part. And of course, Patreon is a great way to support every single month. Or you can join the channel is another new... It's basically Patreon, but for YouTube and with YouTube. And we get to see your uh, name and your or your words in green in the chat. And our lives, which is really, really fun for us. It's like, oh my god, there's so much green. Wow, we have so much support. And of course, join those lives and Super Chat if you can. If not, just support and say hi. Because your interaction is like half of why we do them. So, thanks so much and see you then. Until next time, guys. I'm Captain Foley. And I'm Connor Holmes. Bye, guys. <laughs> see ya.